Are you tired of feeling stuck in your current skill level? Do you dream of being able to learn and accomplish amazing feats like Senku from Dr. Stone, the walking encyclopedia? Well, you are at the right place. Here, I will show you exactly how you can make that dream a reality by becoming an elite learner. Hey guys, before we kick off this video, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. Your support truly means a lot, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. I do want to apologize, though, because of my inconsistency, but I promise you that I'm working hard to improve and provide you with the best quality content I possibly can. So thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate it more than you know. Now, let's get into the good stuff. In my previous video, I discussed the first four principles out of nine from the Ultra Learning Framework. One principle, meta-learning. We must consider the process of learning a skill as a project. We must first devise the exact plan with the deadline to learn that skill before even starting with the studies. Number two is focus. How to focus in the busy modern world. A hundred years later, the problem has only gotten worse. Number three is directness. To be honest, learning by doing is the most critical phase. And Senku accomplished it so brilliantly that it may be the most effective phase in the entire mastering process. Number four is drill. Attack your weakest points. You can see the hard work Senku put in bettering himself, constantly working on his weak points and never letting those things get in the way of his goal. These principles helped Scott Young finish the entire four-year MIT curriculum of computer science in just one year and Benny Lewis became fluent in German in just three months. Now I am back with the next five principles that will take you even closer to achieving your ultimate learning goals. If you haven't watched the first part yet, I would recommend you to watch that video first by clicking the link in the description or the i button. By following the nine principles of ultra learning, you can learn anything efficiently and effectively. From cooking to writing to learning high paying skills, nothing is off limits when you use these principles. Welcome risers to part two of this incredible four part series about becoming the jack of all trades. If you thought the first part was amazing, just wait until you see what I have in store for you ahead. And don't skip the video, watch till the end. I have something exciting to offer you guys. And you know the drill, this video is not for passive entertainment. So put down the popcorn, get off your bed, and go grab a pen and paper because you are going to learn some valuable insights that will transform your life for the better. Let me warn you though, if you are content with mediocrity, then this may not be the right place for you. But if you are ready to challenge your current beliefs and take massive action to create a life that truly excites you, then you are in the right place. So get ready to push your limits, break your barriers, and unlock your full potential. Let's dive into the remaining five principles of ultra learning and discover how you can become the jack of all trades. For the first time in 3,700 years, the flame of science will burn. Principle number five, retrieval, test to learn. Picture this, you're a student and you're preparing for the biggest exam of the year. You know that you need to put in some serious study time to get the grades you want, but you're not sure where to start. You start highlighting, underlining, and memorizing all points that seem important to you, only to forget them later that same evening. But then also, you somehow manage to memorize it all. But when you finally receive the question paper in the exam hall, it leaves you feeling completely blank. It's as if the paper was designed to fail you. You feel disappointed and frustrated when all your hard work goes to waste because you couldn't recall the information you needed during the exam. I want to start by reassuring you that if you've ever struggled with studying and retaining information, it's not a reflection of your abilities or intelligence. Now, let me give you the solution. Before starting with your learning journey, the number one step is to first know exactly what to learn, what to prioritize the most. In the first part of this series, we delved exactly into that, the crucial aspect of what to learn. We explored effective strategies for identifying and prioritizing the most important information to focus on, and how to organize it in a way that makes sense and is easy to remember. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend you to do so to set yourself up for success. Let's go over how Senku approaches learning any skill he wants. When he wanted to build the first steam engine car in the Stone Age, he devised a mind map first, using principle first, which is meta-learning, knowing exactly where to focus on. Then he focused on the main task, considering one thing at a time, building a model design first, and then slowly working towards the main and most complicated goal of building a working engine, using principle second, which is focus. Outside of theory, he studied the applicability of what he was learning, right from building an almost successful rocket to helping his dad ace an astronaut exam, by using principle third, which is directness learning by doing. 
He managed to overcome his weakness of trying to work on everything at once by dividing tasks into smaller ones and working on them accordingly. He never gives up and always excels himself, competing with himself and not anyone else, using principle fourth, which is drill attack your weakest points. I have already covered these principles in depth in the first part of this series. If you haven't watched it yet, I will put the link in the description for you. Moving on with the fifth principle. It's not you, it's the methods that you are using, which are inefficient and causing you more harm than good. Instead of passively rereading all of the underlined information, you should try to actively recall information from memory without looking at your notes. This is like flexing a muscle. The more you practice, the stronger it gets. With each attempt, you will be able to retrieve information more quickly and accurately. If you have watched Dr. Stone, then you already know the power of active recall. From inventing the first electric generator to building a car in the Stone Age, Senku uses this technique to master every new skill he encounters. Senku's success is a testament to the power of active recall. By testing himself on his knowledge and retrieving information from memory, he is able to retain the information more effectively and apply it in real-world situations. Here's one more example. Let's say you're studying for a history exam and you need to memorize a list of important dates. Instead of just reading over the dates repeatedly, try to actively recall them from memory. This can mean closing your eyes and reciting the dates or writing them down from memory. The more you practice, the more likely you are to remember them during the exam. By actively recalling information, you are training your brain to retrieve information under pressure, a skill that will serve you well not only in exams but also in real-life situations. So don't just passively review your notes or keep underlining and highlighting. Actively recall the information and watch your grades soar. Sixth Principle – Feedback Don't dodge the punches Feedback can make or break us. It's a powerful tool that can help us assess our level of competence in any field. However, it can also be a double-edged sword that cuts both ways. On one hand, praise can lead to complacency, and overly critical feedback can be discouraging. But on the other hand, constructive feedback is essential for growth and improvement. It's a valuable gift that we should learn to embrace, even when it's difficult to hear. In Dr. Stone, Senku is a shining example of how to use feedback effectively. He understands that feedback, even when critical, is the key to rebuilding civilization. His ability to extract the signal from the noise and use feedback to improve is a valuable lesson for us all. To achieve our goals and reach new heights of success, we must learn to listen to feedback objectively and use it to fuel our growth and development. We must push past our egos and learn to separate useful feedback from noise, taking what we learn to improve our skills and abilities over time. Remember, feedback is a tool for improvement. The more we embrace it, the better we will become. So let's lean into the challenge of using feedback to improve and become the best versions of ourselves. Seventh principle, retention. Don't fill a leaky bucket. Learning new things can be hard, but retrieving on command, remembering what you've learned can be even harder. However, there are ways to make your memory stronger and remember more. You can use techniques as spacing out your practice over time, breaking down complex tasks into smaller steps, practicing until you really know something, and using tricks like making up silly sentences to remember information. Let me explain even more. 1. Spacing out your practice over time Research has shown that spacing out your study sessions over time can be more effective than cramming everything into one single session. This is because space repetition allows your brain to consolidate and reinforce the information more effectively. A good strategy is to schedule multiple study sessions for the same topic, rather than trying to cover everything in one go. Combine it with the Pomodoro technique and you will be unstoppable. It's the perfect technique to help you not procrastinate, be productive, create urgency, and help you stay focused on any task you are tackling. 2. Breaking down complex tasks into smaller steps When faced with a complex task, it can be helpful to break it down into smaller, more manageable steps. This approach can make the task seem less overwhelming and easier to remember. It's also easier to identify areas where you may need more practice or clarification. 3. Practicing until you really know something. Repeating a task or activity multiple times can help you master it more effectively. This is because the more you practice, the more ingrained the information becomes in your memory. It's important to practice consistently and deliberately, focusing on areas where you need more improvement, and don't forget to use active recall instead of passively repeating the same information. 4. Using tricks like mnemonics Mnemonics are memory aids that use a variety of techniques to help you remember information. You might create an acronym to remember a list of items, or use a rhyme or song to remember a specific fact. Mnemonics can be especially helpful for remembering information that may not be immediately intuitive, or that requires rote memorization. 5. Engaging multiple senses Engaging multiple senses when learning can help improve your memory recall. 
For example, you might read information aloud, draw pictures or diagrams, or even act out a concept. The more senses you engage, the more likely you are to remember the information. In the anime Dr. Stone, Senku uses these memory techniques to help him remember complex scientific formulas and concepts. By doing this, he is able to learn and remember things quickly and accurately, which later on helps him in his goal of rebuilding civilization. So if you want to remember more of what you learn, try using some of these memory techniques. It might take some work and practice, but it can help you learn and remember more in the long run. Eighth Principle Intuition – Dig deep first, then build up Intuition is a powerful tool that geniuses use to operate beyond comprehension. It occurs when we do things naturally without struggle. By going deep into a problem, we develop intuition that allows us to know the outcome before dealing with it. An example of someone who utilizes intuition is Senku from the anime Dr. Stone. He continuously seeks knowledge and goes deep into problems, which allows him to develop a deep intuition that aids him in his scientific pursuits. Senku knows what the outcome will be before he even begins his experiment, and this is what sets him apart from others. To cultivate intuition like Senku, we must be willing to continuously seek knowledge and develop a deep understanding of the problem at hand. By doing so, we can trust our intuition and make decisions that lead to success. So don't be afraid to dive deep and develop your intuition. Ninth Principle – Experiment Explore outside your comfort zone Vincent van Gogh, one of the most influential painters in history, started his artistic journey at the age of 26 with no previous experience in art. Despite being considered weird and crazy by his peers, he persisted in his obsession with drawing, experimenting with different styles and constantly trying to improve. His willingness to experiment and push boundaries allowed him to develop a unique and recognizable style making him one of the greatest artists of all time. Similarly, in the anime series Dr. Stone, the main character Senku uses experimentation and trial and error to develop new technology and advance civilization after humanity has been petrified for thousands of years. He constantly tries new approaches and methods, learning from his failures and successes, and eventually creates inventions that were previously thought impossible to create in a stone age without having complex technology. The lesson here is to truly master something and achieve greatness, one must be willing to experiment and push boundaries. It's not about following a set formula or copying what others have done before, but about finding one's own unique path and constantly striving for improvement through experimentation and perseverance. In conclusion, mastering the art of learning is a never-ending journey filled with challenges. However, by mastering the fundamentals, we build a solid foundation that allows us to dive into new skills and ideas with ease. Scott's message is clear. True mastery comes not from following the same path as others, but from exploring possibilities that have yet to be imagined. Combining his knowledge with creativity and experimentation, Senku is able to achieve feats that others thought were impossible. In the end, the key to mastery is not just about learning what has already been taught, but exploring the unknown and pushing boundaries to achieve true greatness. Now that you've made it to the end, you remember about the exciting gift? I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown. And in return, I've decided to provide you a free Notion template with a step-by-step -step guide to unlock your true potential using these nine principles. You'll be able to customize this template in your own unique way, tailored specifically to your needs and desires. You'll have everything you need at your fingertips. So download it from the link in the description and get one step closer to unlocking your true potential. If you like this video and want me to continue this series, show some support by subscribing and liking the video, which also helps our video to push through the algorithm and reach a more interested audience as well. Also, let me know in the comment section below which is your favorite anime character and want me to break down further. This concept is exemplified in the character of Senku as well. He uses his vast knowledge of science to explore new possibilities and solve problems that others thought impossible. You can follow us on social media at Rising Curiosity by clicking the link in the description to get more updates. Until next time, sayonara.